So one of the main things we talk about in chemistry is chemical reactions. And now we're going to take a second and talk about how we express chemical reactions in the form of chemical equations. A chemical equation is just a set of molecules separated by a reaction arrow. The molecules to the left of the arrow are called reactants, and the molecules to the right of the arrow are called products. Inside of this chemical equation, it's important to state what form the matter is in for each of the molecules that are involved in our reaction. To do this, we use a simple subscript. So if a molecule is a gas, it gets a subscript G. If it's a liquid, subscript L. A solid is subscript S. And one that we're going to be seeing quite a bit is AQ, which means our molecule is dissolved in water. One of the ideas of a chemical equation is that we need to have the same number of each type of atom on either side of the reaction arrow. Due to the conservation of mass, we cannot gain or lose atoms as we go through a reaction. So that's going to be fundamentally true for all of the chemical reaction equations that we see for the rest of chemistry. So here we see a basic chemical equation. If we look at it, on the left hand side there is four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. So we have an H2, and we have two of those, so two times two is four hydrogen atoms. Here we have an oxygen molecule. An oxygen molecule has two oxygens in it, so we have two on the left-hand side of the arrow. On the right-hand side of the arrow, we have a water molecule, H2O, as our product. So each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. So if we have two waters, we have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. So that's going to be true from here on out. Whenever we see a reaction equation, this idea is going to be true that whatever atoms we start with in our reactants, so here is our reactants, are also going to show up inside of our products, most likely in a different form. So something that we're going to see quite often is you end up having to generate the products of a given reaction. So if we give you a set of reactants, you need to come up with what the products are. When you do that, it's going to be very, very important for you to take a second and balance the reactions. And so we're going to talk about that in the subsequent videos. And when you're done, this should always be true. The same number of each type of atom is going to be the same on both side of the reaction arrows. So the idea of balancing is kind of important. So we'll see some examples of that here in just a second. One of the other things that's important and part of the reason why it's vital for you to balance a reaction is that the number that is out in front of each molecule involved in our chemical equation is uh, very, very important. So this is called stoichiometry and it tells me exactly how many of each molecule is involved in the reaction. And it's stoichiometry that's going to allow us to determine, it's called a limiting reactant or how much product do we expect to make during a reaction. So with this basic chemical equation, the stoichiometry says that for every two hydrogen molecules, we use up one oxygen molecule to make two water molecules. That's what this chemical equation is saying. What's more important is you can realize that instead of using molecules, you can actually use moles. So remember in the in chemical equation, molecules and moles are uh, interchangeable. Molecules are a very small number, so we probably will not be using molecules very often during reactions. Typically what we use is mole. And now we can apply that idea to this chemical equation that two moles of hydrogen molecules react with one mole. So if we don't put a number in front of there, there's an implied one. One mole of oxygen molecules, and those go to make two moles of water molecules. So usually when we look at chemical equations, we will be talking about the stoichiometry in terms of moles of reactants and moles of products.